Today, Papa is trying to save your money so you can purchase the coaching from me. What's up, tricksters? My name is Charlatan and we have a bit of a serious topic at our hands. Which mouse, what equipment and what PC components should you buy for Valorant and other competitive esports titles? One big disclaimer, this is not a tech channel, I am not a Linus Tech Tips and I am not sponsored by any company and I don't do any biased reviews. This is all my personal experience and honest opinion about the products that I've tried or I'm currently using. As you all know, I've played FPS games for the past 20 years. In every single one of them, I reached the top ranks. And some of them I even played on a semi or pure professional levels. So naturally, I changed and tried enormous amounts of PC setups and equipment. And to be honest, I also wasted crap ton of money simply to try out new stuff. So today I'm going to try to save your money and your time. I'm purely gonna be focused on FPS esports games and what are the best buy and budget options for you to compete at the top levels. Also, I will leave the link to my personal setup and components and equipment down in the description below, but now let's jump straight into the action. Let's start with the question, how much is the hardware actually important for competing in FPS video games and is it really worth upgrading? Yes, it is extremely important, end of the story. Better equipment will not necessarily make you a better esports player, but it will allow you to reach your full potential faster, to break through your plateau and to be on equal grounds as other top players. For an example, we have Charlatan with 60Hz monitor on 60fps with Chinese mouse and headphones from 2001. On the other side we have a Papito Charlatano that has the same skill level as Charlatan but with 240 hertz monitor on 400 FPS with Razer Viper Ultimate mouse and Bose earbuds. No matter how many games do we play, Papito Charlatano with 240 hertz will always win. This is literally the scene from Dragon Ball when Goku is training with his weights on and then removing them to fight Piccolo. If Goku didn't train at all and he was fatty patty, it doesn't really matter if he fought with or without weights on. So the same goes for you. If you are not having a very good and focused training in video games, you won't become a better gamer because you have a SpaceX Tesla PC setup. Elon Musk, you are a potato gamer. Well, actually, don't quote me on this one. Moving on with a second most asked question on my channel. Charlotte, and what mouse is the best for FPS video games and does it matter which one do I use? Mouse is the first and most important piece of your equipment when it comes to FPS games, because of your ability to be fast and accurate. I tried over 100 different mice in the past 20 years of competition. One. Hundred. There are three things that you need to look for when you're purchasing the mouse for yourself. First thing is the size, shape of the mouse and will it suit your grip style. Second thing is the build quality of the shell, sensor, clicks, weight, etc. And the third thing is what problems does the mouse have, because the perfect equipment doesn't really exist yet. No matter what someone tells you on the internet, there is absolutely no way to find out if the mouse is good for your grip unless you actually try out. When it comes to sensor, any mouse from 2018-17 from the top companies will have extremely good sensor for tracking your movement, so you don't have to worry about it. When it comes to weight, I recommend you to look at the mouse that is between 60 and 100 grams for FPS games. You don't want a brick in your hands. And before you are purchasing any product for your setup, always go on Google or YouTube and search for the problems around that particular type of equipment. So let's say for an example you want to buy Steel Series Rival 100. Immediately search on the internet for the issues that this mouse might have in a longer run and compare it to other mice that you might wanna 
buy. My personal recommendation when it comes to best budget mouse option at around $50 price point for Valorant and FPS games is Razer Viper Mini without any competition. And overall best buy options are Logitech G Pro Wireless and Razer Viper Ultimate. Razer Viper Mini is extremely cheap considering its great build quality, extremely good cable and amazing clicks. I personally prefer wireless mice and I think they are 10 times better at the moment than any wired one. Less cables, less strains on your aim and much more freedom with a top-notch sensor and wireless technology. Razer Viper Ultimate has better build quality, better clicks, scroll wheel and pads, but it has a bit weird shape which might not suit your hand personally. While on the other hand, G Pro Wireless has the best shape in my opinion, but accidental scroll wheels and mouse clicks will happen over time and the overall build quality is not that great. I personally use Razer Viper Ultimate. Honorable mentions would definitely be Cooler Master MM710 and Endgame Gear XM1. I personally think that medium and small mice are much better for precision in FPS games, no matter how large your hand is. Of course, we need to calculate in your grip style as well. And I will repeat it once again, wireless technology is as good as wired. Second most important part of your gaming setup is your headset, the ability to hear enemies' footsteps and gunshots as clean as possible. I tried around 40 different headphones and earbuds over past 20 years, and I have some very strong opinions in this segment, because I'm also playing a lot of instruments and doing a bit of audio production. My personal recommendation when it comes to best budget options for around $50 price point is Razer Black Shark V2X, and if you would like earbuds, Cooler Master MH710. When I say O, I mean zero. And overall, best buy options are Logitech G Pro X, Razer Black Shark V2 Pro, and if you would like earbuds, Bose Quiet Comfort 20. I personally use Bose earbuds because when you go to the tournaments, people usually use noise cancelling headsets in combination with earbuds, so we don't hear the crowd and people around us. Just remember, when you're buying gaming earbuds, I also recommend you to buy some external sound card so that you can get the best sound out of them. For example, Sound Blaster X, Focusrite, etc. The third most important thing for gaming is your monitor. I will not debate this one, and I will give you the straightforward answer once and for all, like it or not. 60Hz monitor is shize. For me, FPS games are unplayable on this type of monitor. 120Hz monitor is bare minimum, 144Hz to 240Hz is sweet spot, and 360Hz is extremely good. But if you already have 240Hz, you don't need to upgrade, because if you are not an experienced professional esports player, you will barely feel any difference. But if you have 144Hz, or 165 hertz, upgrading to 360 hertz will feel so good. I literally sound like a salesman in this video, like, <laughs> what's going on, man? <laughs> refresh rate represents the amount of frames that are being rendered in one second. High refresh rate means smoother picture and real-time rendering of your enemies, so your aim will feel more fluid, precise, and accurate. When you are buying a high refresh rate monitor, make sure that it has one millisecond response time. Everything else else is not important for gaming. Now, make sure to connect your monitor to your PC with a display port or DVI cable. If you connect your monitor with HDMI cable, you're playing on 60 Hz only. And make sure to go into display settings, advanced display settings, display adapter properties, and check if your monitor is turned on to the maximum refresh rate. When it comes to mousepad, my personal favorites are Cooler Master Swift RX. Zoe GSR and Steel Series QCK Plus. I personally love more of uh, quick mouse pads than the control ones. And I don't really like Razer's and Logitech's mouse pads. They feel kind of bad and cheap for me for some reason. I don't know why. Just make sure that the texture of mouse pad doesn't have any bumps and that the mouse pad is big enough for your sensitivity and aiming style. Always go for the larger XXXXXXXL mouse pads. And when it comes to keyboards, any mechanical keyboard is good enough 
trust me. Don't overthink it too much. The main difference is what kind of features do you need on your keyboard and what type of switches do you prefer. I personally like Razer Linear Optical, Cherry MX Red and Logitech Roamer G Tactile switches. My favorite keyboards that I've used so far are Razer Huntsman Tournament Edition and HyperX FPS Alloy. Also the Logitech G Pro keyboard was fairly nice. And when it comes to best budget options, nothing beats Red Dragon keyboards in my opinion. And of course, in order to play Valorant, CSGO and other games, you actually need a PC on which you can play it, duh. Unfortunately, at PC builds there is just so many things to talk about, things are changing constantly, and it's better to watch tech channels to keep up to date. My personal recommendation is always to build a PC in mind to have at least 150 plus FPS in your main games that you're playing, because that is a bare minimum to keep your 144Hz monitor useful. More FPS? High refresh rate means smoother gameplay, which means that you will remove all the hardware limitations from your gameplay. And now the only reason you suck at video games is because you didn't get coached by charlatan. Focus on having at least 8GB of RAM with low latencies, definitely buy one dedicated SSD for your Windows and games that you're playing, and at least 700 watts of power supply, but this depends what CPU and GPU you're gonna purchase. In terms of CPU for Valorant and CSGO, I wouldn't go below Ryzen 7 3700X or Intel i5-8400. And looking at GPUs, the lowest budget options would be GTX, X1060 with 6 GB of VRAM for NVIDIA team and RX 5500 XT with 8 GB of RAM for Red team. If you want to buy the latest tech and to drop some money on high-end PC, I would definitely wait until April of next year because AMD is releasing new CPUs and GPUs, Intel is releasing new CPUs and potentially GPUs soon as well, and of course if we fix our corona problems the prices are hopefully gonna stabilize a bit over the course of next year. This has been my short buyer's guide for all of you folks that want to compete in Valorant, CSGO and other FPS games professionally. Oh and one more thing, don't buy the stupid gaming chairs and desk, they are literally scams. Just buy a very good office chair and desk. It is 10 times better and you will save tons of money. Thank me later. And now remember to hit the subscribe, turn on those notifications, spank the bell icon so you don't miss any new content from me, myself, charlatan. Make sure to like this video and leave a comment down below. Tell me which kind of potato are you playing video games at the moment. I personally started on Pentium 4 and I reached Challenger in League of Legends on laptop with 20 FPS only. So don't worry, equipment will unlock your full potential, but you can still reach highest ranks even on 60Hz and 60 FPS like machines. By the way, you can also catch me live on twitch.tv slash charlatan and join my official Discord server to hang out with me, purchase coaching in Valorant or see simply ask me any question. I'm yours one and only warden of the tricksters community, thank you for watching and...